Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video we're going to have a quick look at what happened in Game Week 33 and then see what pain I've got installed for myself for the double Game Week 34. As always, we'll start by looking at the Midnight Mule FPL League and who the top scorer was. Top scorer in the Midnight Mule FPL Mini League was Peter Olu with FC Wololu, I think the name is, with 98 points. So here's the team. We had Haaland, 28 points out as his captain. De Bruyne, 19. Mings, 15. Rashford, 12. And Steele, 10. And the sub they made this week was Sanchez to Steele. So that was a, a very good, sorry, transfer. That was a very good transfer indeed. And on the bench, no points. So absolutely no mistakes made there regarding who was played. Top of the league is Jacob Eriksson still with Skogs Clanton IF, 70 points. And he's currently in the top 1,000 globally, so that's pretty good. He had Haaland, captain 28, Rashford 12, Kane 11, March 5, Henry 5. No one did anything else. And then on the bench, Steele for 10. But to be fair, Brighton away to Forest, or he actually played Kepa, who were at home to Brentford. Most people probably would have played Kepa. Steele only got 10 points because he saved a penalty, and you never know when that's going to happen. The only other points on the bench were Ben Mee for six points, but he was already playing Henry for five. Again, away to Chelsea. Reasonable chance. They shouldn't keep a clean sheet, except Chelsea have been awful recently. As for me, there I am, Midnight Mule, down to 108th in the league. One position below Chat Stop, who've got a YouTube channel. Uh, so if you want to go and check them out, it's worth having a look, see what you think of them. And I'm also one place ahead of Pepe Pigs, which is Ben Kennedy, and I believe he's somebody who's following the 5% series that I'm running. So in case you didn't know, I'm running a series where the aim is to get you to finish in the top 5%. I'm stupid enough to not be following that series, which is why I'm not doing so well this year. But people who have been following it since the start, they're all within the top 5% globally. And I think Ben joined a few weeks ago and he's actually been doing very well and he's getting lots of green arrows. Maybe um, he'll overtake me this coming week. I got 51 points anyway. So Haaland 28. Apart from that, <laughs> Trent 5, March 5. And the rest were twos and ones. <laughs> so that was pretty poor. There was a method to my madness. It was just completely wrong and utter madness in the end. Raya got 9, so I played the wrong keeper. Kepper at home against Raya away, went with Kepper. And then Henry for five. But instead of him, I was playing Castagna, who I thought had more chance of a clean sheet. So anyway, I had three Arsenal players. And I thought, give them one more week. I know they're away to Manchester City. But when they're good, they are very, very good. And it might be they do all get returns. Because Man City do leak goals. Maybe Rashford's not going to really punish me. <laughs> which he did punish me. Um, yeah, so it was an experiment to see. As I'm already a fair bit behind where I'd like to be. I could afford to play around a bit and it completely went wrong. Having Arsenal players was the wrong thing to do and um, yeah, not so good. <laughs> so there we are. Anyway, so that's me. 51 points, which is below the global average, which is really bad if you ever get that. Overall points just over 2,000 now. Another red arrow, that's five out of six are red now. 51 points from half a million, only five points in front of one million. But assuming I take a good number of hits this week, I will be starting the week outside the top 1 million. I uploaded a video about 3 or 4 hours ago to do the 5% series and I had 644 subs. So I've managed to lose a sub in the last few hours. So um, hopefully that won't go down to zero before the end of the season. But we'll see. But, but if you do like watching my pain, do make sure you do subscribe so you can come back and see what happens. On FPL Game Week website, you can see the content creators there, the content creators league on there, and you'd see where you would appear. FPL Harry's the top content creator at the moment, with Ben in second. Ben slightly outscored Harry this week, but he's still, what's that, 49 points behind Harry. I'm all the way down in 54th. The only person on this page that I watch regularly is Oscar with FPL Focal, but he is a fair bit ahead of me, and I think he's free hitting this week, so that would be interesting to see how he does. So, transfer talk. Uh, yeah, my, my season's not going so well. But that gives me the luxury of I can really mess about quite a bit, have some fun, 
gamble there's a remote chance i get a very good score by gambling but of course the chances are my score will be slightly worse for it but i may as well have some fun i mean the game is fun anyway but making lots of subs can be a lot of fun so that's what i'm intending to do i can't show you what my subs are because i've still not decided i will probably decide shortly before the deadline tomorrow morning so if you want to follow me on twitter i nearly always post what i'm doing what my team is so you can uh see how bad I'm doing. I'm not being secretive because no one's going to want to copy my team this season anyway. But so I can tell you who I'm thinking of bringing in, who my choices are and who I'm thinking of getting rid of. That's about as far as I can go. So from Brighton, still very cheap keeper, slightly nervous he may not stay for every single game week simply because Sanchez is quite good. Still did let in three goals in his last game against Forest. And Sanchez kept a clean sheet against Man United last game. So are they going to mix around a bit? I don't know. So probably won't get still, but I may have to if I want to get more expensive players elsewhere in the formation. Dunk, possibly. I've only got two Brighton players at the moment. So Dunk is a possibility because he's, for me, the most nailed on defender. As stupid and has got better attacking returns, of course, than Dunk. But perhaps a slight risk he may get rested any of those three are possible the other one is McAllister I realize he's been playing a bit more defensive recently but between now and the end of the season I'm fully expecting him to be back in the attacking role so I'll almost certainly get a Brighton player I don't know which one yet from Liverpool Canate if I get expensive players in I need to save money Canate is a nice cheap defender Klopp implied today that he should be available to be playing this weekend so I'd expect him to play Robertson I'm tempted by. He can bomb up the wings. He could get assists, a remote chance of a goal. Very remote chance of a clean sheet, but he may be worth having. I've already got Trent, so he's not on this list. And Gakpo, down as a midfielder, he's playing right at the front as a striker. He also seems a very good Liverpool player to get, but I need to see. I'm Like I said, I'm still undecided. I'm trying trying all sorts of my team at the moment. From Manchester City, there's Edison, incredibly boring keeper. If he gets a clean sheet, it tends to be six points, rarely gets more than six. And recently, Man City have been letting a goal in pretty much every game. However, he does have a double game week, so there's a reasonable chance he's going to get seven points or more this coming game week. Stones, I've liked for a couple of weeks and I've been intending to get him. And this looks like I'm just chasing the points now because he scored the last two game weeks. I'm slightly nervous he may get rotated with the Pep Roulette. So another option would be Diaz, who I think is a bit safer, but he is more expensive. And he doesn't have quite the same attacking threat as Stones. Also tempted by Grealish, a moderately cheap midfielder. But the Pep Roulette side of things is really scary. If I was confident Grealish was going to start every game, I'd be much more likely to get him. And a safer bet in midfield is, of course, De Bruyne, who is very expensive. But there are enough cheap players I'm looking at that I could actually afford De Bruyne. But he's a bit of an injury risk at the moment. We don't know for sure he is going to be playing next game. But I'm likely to be getting one or two players from this page. From Man United, De Gea, he can be very good in goal. He can do some spectacular saves and he can do something stupid and then give the ball away. But I am tempted by De Gea. Possibly sure he's moderately cheap for what he can do. I'm aware he's currently playing in the centre of defence just now, but he can still do the odd thing. And he may, in the next few game weeks, go back on the uh, left back. Fernandez is brilliant. One of my favourite players in the Premiership just now, if not the absolute favourite. But he is a bit expensive and I need to, if I get him in, I need to be careful how I get him in. And I'm possibly compromising elsewhere. Now, I realise, of course, De Bruyne is much more expensive than Fernandes. But I think De Bruyne is probably going to outscore Fernandes. So it's like it's worth paying the extra. But I'm still undecided. I'm also tempted by Sancho. Sancho is a very good player and he has been playing more recently. So I may get him. And I should have put Rashford on here as well. Obviously, Rashford's pretty much a bank. You can be sure Rashford's a player I'm going to bring in. From Newcastle, there's Isaac and there's Wilson. They don't have a double game week this coming game week, but they do have a double game week in game week 36. And while I'm messing around moving players about, 
it might just work out that I should get one or both of these in now. And then from Bournemouth, Solanke, because he's cheap, he's going to help me to get the money to buy the players that I need elsewhere. This is my squad as it stands. And I have double game weeks for Trent, March, Matoma, Salah, Darwin, Haaland. That's six players with double game weeks. Darwin, unfortunately, hasn't been playing much recently. He just seems to come off the bench. Now, Jota is potentially injured. He's currently got a 75% chance of playing. But it may be Darwin is going to get 10 minutes and 10 minutes in the next two weeks. Or he may start. He may get 180 minutes. He could get a massive score. But I think the chances are he's only going to get four or five points. Almost certainly under 10. So he's somebody, even though he's got a double game week, I may actually move him on. But for sure, I will be moving on Odegaard. And I'll be moving on Jesus. That's two Arsenal boys I'll be moving on. But I've got two free transfers, so that's no hits taken at the moment. So I can already get in some extra players for the double game week. Now, if I don't mind taking hits, and as I'm around the million mark, I may as well take hits and have some fun. I will probably get rid of Martinelli as well, who's been very good for me. And I expect Arsenal, the last two game weeks of the season, will do very well. But maybe for the next few game weeks, I should go for different players and try and go for glory and get some big points. Chelsea have been really disappointing so I could get rid of Kepa but if I get rid of all of these that's already costing me eight points but any of those keepers I showed you could easily outscore Kepa this coming game week by at least four points so you'd have thought in isolation that's worth doing. Castagna again another load of defenders I showed you could easily outscore Castagna by four points this week but if I do all these I'm at minus 12. I may offload Darwin, so I'm already on a minus 16 now. But I think if I bring in a certain six players, my score could go up by 16 points. And certainly in the next few game weeks, with all the double games coming up, I think it could be worth it. Now, of those left, the two Newcastle boys have only got single game weeks. They're at home to Southampton. And the two Brentford boys they're at home to Nottingham Forest so that could well be two clean sheets however could I score more points by <laughs> offloading some of these well I may get rid of Henry it's going to put me at minus 20 and if I offload rare as well who's the last one I'm seriously considering that would be 24 points worth of hits I'll be taking at the start of the week to get in a load of doublers and hopefully get a really good double game week score and within the next two or three game weeks, hopefully make it back from the transfers. I do still have my bench boost. If I take this many, I will be bench boosting this week. But if I only take uh, maybe a minus four or minus eight, I may save my bench boost for game week 27 and gradually do transfers up to then. So I've not decided yet, but certainly before 11 o'clock tomorrow, if you follow me on Twitter, you should see me post whatever it is that I'm going to do. As for the captain... I'm almost certainly going to let Harlan have the old mule hat. He seems like the sensible choice to me. And then the vice captain, the wee bonnet, will go on Salah. Certainly if I was in the top probably 200,000, I would take a maximum of a minus four this week and try and hold my position and hope to gradually edge up. There's no point trying to hold my position where I am. I need to take big risks and see what happens. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you're doing an awful lot better than I am. But there's still next season. We can look forward to that. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>